So I want to tell you a little story that's found in the Agadic literature, the Agadita, that when the people of Israel received the Torah prior to getting the Torah, God offered the Torah to all the nations of the world, and every single nation refused. There's even a song about it, why the Arabs refused, and why the Germans refused, and why the English refused, and why the Americans refused, and why the Russians refused, and only Israel accepted. And I always wondered, if God in God's glory came, how is it possible for a nation to not accept God's words? So I was always looking for some other interpretation. So let me share with you an insight that later on I saw someone else, someone of the great rabbis actually, said this about 80 years before me. Perhaps a little bit different, perhaps there is something novel here. One of the fascinating things about the Torah is that the Torah obligates the Gentiles to establishing courts of law. The question is, what is this obligation for the Gentiles of the world, the Bnei Noach, to establish courts of law? What are the laws that they're supposed to cover? Maimonides believes that they're supposed to create laws that are fair for the populace and also adjudicate the matters dealing with the seven Noahide commandments, dealing with theft, murder, uh, adultery, idolatry, and things of that nature. But there are no specific civil codes that the courts of the Noahites deal with specifically. Rather, it appears from Maimonides that they're supposed to make fair laws for all the peoples concerning monetary, uh, monetary matters, but that there was no specific set of laws given to them. Nachmanides is of another opinion. Nachmanides actually says that the courts of law have to adjudicate matters of civil law that are mentioned in the Mishpotim. In other words, according to Nachmanides, Rabbi Moses ben Nachman, the Mishpotim that are mentioned in our Parsha are actually the Mishpotim, the rules that God set out for Noah. This brings us to a fascinating uh, insight. You all out there in world history were told by your teachers and college professors that the Bible came after Hammurabi. Hammurabi had this incredible code and the Bible is just a poor substitution that the Jewish people, people of Israel, took from Hammurabi's code or from a Hittite code or from other codes of the ancient world. Interestingly, that when they discovered Sumer, which predated Hammurabi by at least 200 years and was destroyed, the city, ancient city of Sumer, had laws on its books that sound almost a carbon copy of the laws that we have in our book called Mishpatim. And then after a careful analysis, one comes to the following conclusion. The original book of law that was given to the ancient world was the one that the Sumerians had, as well as <coughs> the Semites, and which reached the children of Israel. We, in our books, recorded almost word for word what the Sumerians had had in their books. However, we were separated from the Sumerians by two factors. Geography, we were about four or five hundred miles away from them. And two, our books are about four to five hundred years younger than the Sumerians. Which leads to the following conclusion. We had the tradition passed down from Noah, father to son, and we collected 
that tradition in the section called Mishpatim. That same tradition was found by the Sumerians. They had the same tradition. And in fact, this was the tradition of all of the ancient world. What happened was that for a lot of people, these laws were inconvenient. The law against raping a woman. Well, if you were very powerful and liked women and you had your way with them, uh, the law was very, very excessive. You'd have to marry the girl. And that was inconvenient. And so after a while, the laws of the Mishpatim were changed for convenience sake. The Sumers, they were destroyed. They had no heirs. The only ones that kept the original code was the people of Israel, the children of Israel. They were the only nation that kept the Mishpatim, the rules handed down to Noah that God had given. They didn't alter them for convenience. You know, some people may be morally challenged, ethically challenged, but intellectually they're honest and they tell the truth. Many of the people of Israel were righteous. Some were not so righteous. But one thing that was consistent with all of them is that they acknowledged the truth and kept it intact. And so this is the meaning of what it says that God went to all the nations and offered them the Torah. What did God offer them? He offered them the mishpatim, the laws of man to man. He gave these laws to Noah as an inheritance for all of mankind. In the course of time, all the nations changed it. That's the meaning that they refused to accept the Torah. They refused to accept a standard that was immutable, unchanging, a standard that was not reflective of the whims of the people, but rather was universal, a universal standard. What a breath of fresh air, a universal standard. Either abortion is immoral or moral. It can't be in between. It's not a great thing. Assisted suicide is either killing or compassion. Take your pick. It can't be two different things. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. It's not a popularity contest. The laws of God between man and man are immutable. Hammurabi changed it. The Hittites changed it. The Egyptians changed it. All of the ancient nations changed their laws to accommodate their whims, their desires. The only ones who remained intellectually honest and kept the laws exactly as they were given were the people of Israel. And that's what it means that only the people of Israel were willing to accept the Torah. Only they were honest enough to realize that you can't fool around with God's law and that even though if it's inconvenient you still have to keep it and even if you violate it at least you recognize that this is the law you don't make an immoral act moral because it makes you feel better and that is why that the Agatha says that God went around to all the nations. God didn't appear to all the nations. God just had to look into their books. What do their law books say? Did they keep the Torah exactly as I gave it to them? They didn't. The only people who did were the people of Israel. They were the only ones who God could trust. And that's the reason why the laws of Mishpatim, the civil laws, are next to the giving of the Torah. You know why we got the Torah? Because we kept the Mishpatim, we kept the laws as God gave them, exactly, without changing. We didn't make abortion legal, nor did we say homosexuality could be marriage, nor did we think that assisted suicide is an act of compassion, because it goes against the Mishpatim.